Hi everyone, welcome to my channel. My name is Noelle and I review and unbox subscription boxes here on my channel and today I have another book box to share with you that has been sent to me for review and photography and you guys buckle your seatbelts because this is going to be a rough one because it is from Down the Rabbit Hole Book Box. For those of you who like to take a break from happy endings, it was quite a book this time around, but I did want to show you their new book box. It's a new hand-drawn design. I personally honestly really like the old design. I thought it was kind of elegant and spooky, but now we've got this little bunny that's like gnawing on a skull and some books, but it does have a down the rabbit hole book box uh, gift there. So that is what is kind of neat about this book subscription if you've never seen it before. Aside from the fact that they do choose darker reads, that can mean mysteries, thrillers, horror. Um, it's not necessarily new books. Sometimes we get kind of like classics like Agatha Christie mysteries, and sometimes we get newer ones that I've just never heard of. Honestly, there's some very, um, if you know those genres, that we've gotten some sort of iconic things. She does uh, limited editions as well for like Stephen King. They did an It box. They've done some Gillian Flynn boxes um, and just books that I guess I just had not been on my radar because I, I like a dark read, I like a thriller, I like a mystery, but the horror stuff is too much for me. And this book was almost too much for me, honestly. I was glad that it was short. The box itself is $49.99 and that does include domestic shipping. I do have a code for you. It's Noel15. That will save you 15%. Included in that $49.99 is of course the book as well as some gifts that correspond to, I'd say four to five gifts that correspond to the pages. And then of course there's a little brochure that tells you a little bit more about the featured author. There's usually a playlist, a bookmark, and then sometimes there's some little extras like some tea sachets or something to soothe your soul. So inside, this is what the new inside of the box looks like. We've got that creepy little bunny again, reading dark books. Um, and this is kind of what like some of the book, uh, excuse me, what some of the gifts look like. Sometimes they come in a little mailer bag. Sometimes they come in a box. Sometimes they come in a more flat package like this one. So um, I'm just gonna pull all of those items out because I have the book itself and then some of the other items down here at the bottom. So let me just go ahead and pull it out and we can get started. All right, so yes, still a really nice high quality box. She does put a lot of effort into that. And when she does the limited edition boxes, you guys, she actually creates, she designs brand new boxes for those, which I think is really, really cool. I do take some photography, I do take some photos for these boxes over on my Instagram, but usually I just do like one post instead of like a whole bunch of them, because I don't want to spoil it if you do have some of these boxes waiting to be read. Although most of the time the passages uh, aren't necessarily spoilers, when it's like a thriller and if they are I kind of amend what I read but the book in question if you've been wondering you're like get get to it Noelle because I'm just trying to like <laughs> I'm trying not to because it was a rough book. It's called Gone to See the River Man by Christopher Triana so it was just this little paperback I mean it's just this kind of apocalyptic looking thing where there's the boat in case you're wondering but let me go ahead and uh read the blurb on the back which honestly i didn't read but it was short that was the saving grace for me personally that was that it's only 165 pages so it says super fans groupies stalkers these people will give anything for the idols they worship be they rock stars actors or authors or even serial killers. Now you guys know I listen to a lot of true crime, but I am kind of horrified that there's like true crime like merch that people like like their own mementos from serial killers and that sort of obsession to me is a little bit creepy. Lori's obsession is with Edmund Cox, who was convicted of butchering more than 20 women. She will do anything to get close to him. So when he gives her a task, she accepts. She has no idea of the horror that awaits her. Edmund says she must go to his cabin in the woods and retrieve a key to deliver to a mysterious figure known only as the Riverman. She brings along her sister, and the trip becomes a surreal nightmare, one that digs up Lori's personal demons, the one she feels bonds her to Edmund. Soon she will learn the Riverman is not quite fact or folklore, and definitely not human, at least not anymore. So yes, there's definitely folklore involved. It gets very... Um, 
almost supernatural like you wonder if she's like hallucinating she definitely proves she kind of tells her story in flashbacks and we realize that she is just as messed up as the serial killer that she is obsessed with and I think that it's the sort of commentary is that it's not just serial killers that are terrible human beings human beings can be terrible for a variety of reasons and uh there are a lot of sort of trigger topics that I am going to try not to mention, but man, there were some scenes where I was just like, what? And then there were just some scenes where it just got a little bit too supernatural and that's not like my, that's not my thing. So I was just kind of going quickly through those pages. Uh, here is our bookmark. It says, there's only two places anyone can find peace, the woods and the grave. So that gets, of course, repeated. Here is our Spotify playlist. And then here is our brochure. Now she does do hints for the upcoming book. You can ask if you want to via email what the actual title is. But the hint for this one, it was, I'm your biggest fan. So, you know, it could have been any like sort of stalker obsession one. I had never heard of this one personally. This is a picture of the author, Christopher Triana. And then of course it does tell us a little bit about about him and I guess I, I think this might be his novels include Full Brutal which was the winner of the 2019 Splatterpunk Award for Best Horror Novel so yes he is definitely in the horror genre which is not my vibe but book boxes can open your eyes I kind of wish that it was like I don't know I you after reviewing this book box for like three years you'd think I would understand the cadence of it's like horror thriller mystery horror thriller mystery and like I wish that I could skip the boxes like honestly sometimes they're just really rough they're just really really rough so this is what it looks like when you come to a page and this is kind of what the original box looked like the design so I wonder if she's going to change those sticky notes up as well but let me go ahead and read the passage to you and then we will open the gift together so she has been basically a pen pal of Edmund because she wants to get to know him because she's a bad person too and she thinks she understands him. Slipping the letter back into the envelope, she put it in the shoe box with the others. Once this box had held a pair of boots her parents bought her for Christmas. If they knew the box held my correspondence with Danton's most notorious serial killer now, what would mom and dad have to say? It was one box of many. The others contained notes, letters, pictures, and emails from various serial killers, mass shooters, and other convicted murders she'd started a correspondence with over the years. Her interest in true crime books and documentaries was a hobby turned obsession. It was her one escape from the dullness of her own reality, the emptiness of everyday life that suffocated women far stronger than she was. And personal closest, closeness to such human atrocities brought excitement like a pulsing electrical charge a feeling she'd grown addicted to in conversations with those who took life Lori no longer felt dead inside killers of all people made her feel alive so it, in that moment early in the book you almost kind of understand it and it was like kind of justifying why I like to listen to true crime I don't think I'd ever go to like a convention necessarily I think the reason that I like the podcast is because they're not visual because visual is difficult for me but also I just like good storytelling so when someone can tell me a story and has done like good research that's captivating to me so gift number one came in this lovely little envelope uh, and of course it's this is just one of those like kind of paper gifts where someone has decided to put their mind into the character and they've actually written out in nice handwriting a letter that she could have written that Lori could have written to Edmund so for me that's not really a gift in all honesty it, yes it brings the pages to life in theory but uh, that doesn't count as a gift because it's not something I can use in my daily life right so that brings us down to now maybe we have four gifts like four lifestyle gifts all right so the next one was on page 33 Let's see. So she is going with her sister Abby, who a while ago had a tragic accident that has left her with, um, uh, she's physically disabled, but she also is basically got the mental capacity of a child, even though she's technically her older sister. Abby is Lori's older sister. She now acts like a child and Lori is basically her caretaker. Are we there? Abby asked. Not yet, you need a break? Abby nodded. Her eyes were downcast and her mouth hung open. Okay then. Lori led her to a fallen eastern hemlock tree that had taken a huge chunk of earth with it. Its exposed roots were a wooden squid reaching in every direction, the mound of, earth, of dirt beneath it like the mouth of the cave. They slung off their backpacks and sat on the middle of the tree. 
Want a snack? Lori asked. Nah, I want to wait till we get to the fort. Then we can have snackies. Abby opened her fanny pack and retrieved her rabbit's foot. She rubbed it, watching her fingers move across the spotted white fur that had grayed from various stains. So I was like, please, with the like rabbit like theme and stuff, I don't want a rabbit's foot because I just think that's kind of gross. Um, so I was opening gift number two that came in this mailer bag and I was like, well, I don't think it's a rabbit's foot because that would be interesting packaging if it was. I was very happy to see it was this cute little mint uh, or sage green corduroy backpack, just like a single shoulder one. So yes, you could actually use it like more or less a, it's, it's got that like angled look to it, right? So it's a kind of something that can go over your shoulder for easy access or it can go over in the back too. But I usually feel like people are using like fanny packs and shoulder bags this way so that you can reach them in the front. I thought it was really cute. Um, the zipper is stuck on this one, so I'm gonna have to play around with that. I didn't, I didn't try it before. Oh, it was just caught on a string on the inside, so because it doesn't have like any like lining or anything, no finishing, but um, it's kind of cute. So it's got the two different pockets. Again, it's kind of the finishing, not like the best. So you can't expect like the best quality in this box necessarily, but it is pretty roomy in all honesty. So it's probably one of those situations um, where I just have to work the zipper back and forth a few times, but I thought this was a cute gift. So that is an example of a good lifestyle gift where, you know, they were using their backpacks. And so now we got a little backpack. All right, page 89. So she thinks she's going to go find this like mystical guy and like, retrieve this item and return it to this mystical river man she only takes two days off of work and then she takes her sister who like slows her down i'm like what are you thinking it's only going to take two days it's going to take way longer than that anyway all right so they do meet a couple characters in the woods and she they stay with a guy named buzz overnight and he is sort of um hyping the lore of it and telling them that you know just like in any classic horror like you don't want to go down there like don't go like it's gonna be bad but they stay overnight with him abby turned back to buzz and pointed at her red socks cap this bee goes buzz buzz just like you it's not a letter it's a bee it can fly it, i didn't understand this like she's got a red socks hat with the bee on it it goes buzz buzz just like you but because his name is buzz but it's like, it's not just a letter, it's also a B. I guess it's like wordplay, but it didn't make sense to me. The old man smiled at her, then looked up to Lori, giving her a wink. Lori smiled back, but it was an empty smile, void of any meaning. She was pondering the strange feeling that had soaked her a moment ago. So distracted by it, she almost missed the river shack on the eastern bank. And I was like, okay, are we getting a Red Sox hat? <laughs> Which secretly I was almost excited for because I went to college on the East Coast and as some of you know my husband and I like baseball and we're trying to go to all the parks and so when we were in Boston a few years ago, this is actually quite a few years ago now, um, because I had, that was my first trip to Fenway and I kind of wanted a Boston Red Sox hat but because of his teams he was like I, you know, you, you cannot you cannot have Red Sox hat. I was like, but I like went to school here. Like he's like, nope, nope, you, no Red Sox hat for you. So my friends who are from Massachusetts are always like, we'll get you a Red Sox hat. I, I have not gotten one. So I was kind of excited. I was like, are we getting a Red Sox hat? Would be kind of a weird item to get or just a ball cap? Not a ball cap. This, it's a lifestyle item, but it is, <laughs> I was like, oh man, this is so not me in so many ways, but that's just something to, that you have to look out for that in a lot of bookish boxes because you'll get like bookish items that'll just say like I love books and stuff and that's not like I love books but I don't need to like have it on a shirt you know so we got something that goes on your head it is not red I thought maybe we'd just get a red ball cap that didn't have a bee on it or that had like a literal buzz buzz bee like a little cute bee no we got a pink visor that says I love dark books so I think that's kind of funny because it's sort of like sarcastic, like I love dark books and here I am in this cute little pink visor uh, with a Velcro closure. But I was like, it's so pink. You guys know this is not, this, I do some pinks. This is not my pink. And also I just, I don't think I'd ever wear anything that says I love dark books, even if it was black, even if it was red. So this for me was a little bit of a miss just in terms of the interpretation of the gift. Um, but it's kind of cute for summer. And I guess this was technically the June box. So if you were going to use it, if you were reading, if you read along and you're pretty quick about it, then okay, maybe, I don't know. Somebody will like it. Not me. <laughs> I could put something over the I love dark books part. 
But I think that's part of the charm of it, right? That it's like cute and saccharine pink and, you know, but it says I love dark books. I don't know. Then we have gift number four. So let's see. Where is this one? Reaching for the key. That's the thing that she had to retrieve and give back to the river man. Reaching for the key, Lori realized, this is in a whole supernaturally section that I was like, what is happening? Uh, reaching for the key, Lori realized it was already in her hand. She wondered how long she'd been carrying it. It was no longer metallic, but hard organic matter, cartilage, dehydrated sinew. She dared not look at it for fear it would reveal something that would make her withdraw from the doorstep and the quest altogether. The key slid into the lock, old bodies in the act of love. The lock turned, sounding like a popping vertebra, and the door inched open, mucus peeling away from its frame. The boar swelled with stale air and breathed hot pus. I was like, what? This is one of those things where the, like, the house is alive or something? I was like, I don't know about this one. Anyway, so gift number four came in this little pouch. I was like, well, as long as it's not mucus, it is naturally the key now i am hoping that this is one of those little keys that's also like a a, a bottle opener because it does have that little like latch to it but usually those are like really clearly bottle openers i'm trying to see sometimes i have one in my desk drawer here my desk junk drawer not that i can see like readily but i think it's just a decorative key it looks interesting though like here right this looks interesting to me so maybe it's a bottle opener I should have I should have gotten a bottle of beer to try it out for you guys but you know it is it is metal I guess it's just a key so okay it'd be nice if it said what it was supposed to be used for but I guess okay so that was a little bit of a miss for me too so so far the backpack was the winner for me in this one and then finally we did get to page 165 which is the very end of the book so i don't want to give that away because it did have a not particularly surprising ending i think it's supposed to be this like horrifying scene and what happens i think is supposed to i don't know it just there wasn't much catharsis in it i'll say that much but i guess maybe that's a feature of the genre somewhat so this is what we got we did get a custom made item and again this is another thing that you get in a lot of books boxes which is these enamel pins these exclusive enamel pins so this one perfect for halloween don't know what i would do with it otherwise so it is the down the rabbit hole exclusive pin i am from i am your biggest fan and it's a ticket to hell admit one although I think they are, need to admit too with the characters in this uh, in this fun little book. Whew. So for me, and I, I do like down the rabbit hole book boxes, especially when there are mysteries or thrillers. And sometimes the gifts are fantastic, and you know they aren't going to give you nightmares. But this book kind of going to give me nightmares. The like one saving grace is that it wouldn't did get into the supernatural like that to me was a little bit hokey personally. So I didn't freak out. It's when things feel really raw and really real and very true crimey like this could actually happen. That's when I freak out more. So because this had that sort of fantastical element to it, especially in the last half of the book, I was like, all right, I'm not super worried about it. Like some of the books we've read are like ripped from the headlines and could actually happen you know so part of it could happen but towards the end of the book couldn't happen so that kind of saved it for me in terms of keeping me from just being repulsed by the whole thing but just going over the items again that we got we got the letter we got the backpack the visor the key and finally the pin so for me in terms of like functionality really it's just the backpack the visor if you like visors it's just not my style at all the key if it's a bottle opener but i kind of don't think it is the letter was just a piece of paper i mean fun that someone decided to write in her voice but eh. and then finally the pin which if you're a collector of book box pins or you think this would be fun for halloween or you're just a little bit of a dark person anyway sure but so for me really the only item that i would personally use is that backpack in this particular box but 
fingers crossed the next one will be a little bit better a little more to my liking but definitely check out some of the other unboxings I've done for this one check out my Instagram and if you appreciated this I would definitely appreciate a thumbs up let's actually have a secret password just to kind of end things on a positive note so when you come across a secret password in one of my videos you want to enter it along with your contact information and then five days into the following month I use a random number picker to select a few winners to receive mystery boxes you have to be 18 years or older you have to have a US or Canadian mailing address it is not associated with any of the boxes boxes or YouTube and our secret password for today is going to be river because I think of rivers as being cathartic and redemptive not like the river that was in this book <laughs> all right you guys I'll see you soon in my next unboxing